So we're seeing a glorious imbalance here. And it actually has played out in the fact that we have a divorce rate similar to the world, right? And we have a lack of responsible men in the church. Has any, is there anybody else who has an experience of how family is taught and promoted in the church? Um, take on it is quite differently. Um, when I came into the church, I was married. Um, so when I attended, obviously at the time, um, you know, before getting baptized, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, I was married. So when I came in, got baptized, I had um, children and also my husband. Now, um, when I first came into church, there was church on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every wow. other Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I would come to church, bring the ch children to church, morning church, then come back, go to evening church. Then um, later on in my Christian life, it's, it's like I'm the old, like, what I'm doing is not winning my husband at all. Wow. Because I'm going to church, but yet still, my, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. But yeah, I was just going to church and bringing the children to church. And he was sitting one side watching me bringing the church, going to, even sometimes I had to take the train, etc. So when I, when I found out that I was going to church less, I found that he was getting more engaged in what I was doing and asking more questions. And um, the church didn't promote family life that because my husband was unsafe, you know, I need to have a balance with church and also home. But it was God himself that revealed that to me. Mm. And that's just my, my, my few words. Joseph, I want you to speak on that. On that issue of the church destroying the family or potentially damaging the family. Is that a thing? Can the church damage the family? Absolutely. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Because at a time, the children was very young. And yep. just imagine, from a natural person's height, they're not going to understand why yeah. I'm going to church at night, bringing the two young children, they've got school the next day, mm. coming back, and I, don't li I didn't live local, and I still don't live local. Was you able to cook dinner and like, do stuff like that? Um, I did do my... Um, I did do dinner, and I, I made sure the place was you know, in order, but still, Wasn't you we exhausted? didn't have family... <laughs> On a Sunday, we didn't. We never had family. We never used to have family meals, Goodness and he that gracious. used to bother him during the week. Obviously, you know, going to work, coming, so we never really spent time, and that was putting a strain on the family. And how, now, how did that work with your mental health and your mind? How how did that work out for you and your energy levels physically? Well, I was just tired. Because after a while you get burnt out. Mm. Because you're tr you're you're trying to figure out being a Christian because you're just new to the church. Yeah. They keep it in church nearly every single day. No one's telling you that you don't have to come. And when you don't have to come, they look on you like you're doing something wrong. And um, also you're going to work, then you're coming home, and also you have to make sure that you're home is in order you know make sure you know food's ready the the place is tidy and you know and after a while you know maybe i don't know i'm just saying sometimes i look at it and i say probably that's the cause of some of the health issues that i've had wow i mm. don't know only god knows but i know that in my tracks god himself had to speak to me and say you know what no I can't keep on going backwards and forwards. So when I can make it, I go to church. When I can't make it, I have church in my house. And, and that is the birthplace of the church, the home. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Joseph, you have a similar experience. Speak on this. Yeah, so this, is, this goes to the core of the question about what's possibly wrong 
with black led churches and um it comes from the time where you know just turning up is is the major sign that you are faithful that you are a good christian you know being there and so ministries can put you in a position where you know you just have to turn up and you want to do your best to be there because everyone's expecting you to be there um and i think it's 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 a shame that our churches were built that way i'm not i'm not quite sure all the roots of this or why this became the case in a lot of our caribbean churches um but yeah family family will suffer it will suffer at every level if you don't get the right sort of counsel from uh, a mother or you know like our sister who's speaking whose husband isn't saved to to the church minister who's got family like me who had children and um everybody expects to see your face on a wednesday because it's midweek service and then um I'm a youth leader, so I have to be there on a Friday. But the people who are expecting to see me on Wednesday don't even show up on Friday. And I've got to be there Sunday morning and night. And if they call a brotherhood meeting on a Monday, I've got to be there. And if there's a minister's meeting on a Tuesday, I've got to be there. And nobody's saying, like, this is too much. Everybody just wants you to be there and to turn up. And that's one of the problems in our churches. And like my sister said, God had to speak to me. God had to tell me, you don't need to go to midweek service. You have to tell me that. My ministers wouldn't tell me that. No one in the church would tell me that. You know, we have this kind of martyr's mentality that, you know, we have to suffer in ways that are not biblical. Christ never called any one of us to, to suffer, to turn up in a building. That's not what it's about. And so we're suffering in the wrong ways. Our children suffer. Um, our wives and husbands suffer, saved and unsaved, because you not being there is you can't make up for that. And your children are going to get to. And this is what what really rocked me at one point. I realized my children are going to get to a point. They're going to pass the stage where they're actually interested in me as their dad. Right? They get to a point. They say in in studies that until about the age of eight years old, that child looks up to the parent. But after that, they look for the nearest role model. And I'm thinking my kids are going to get to a point where for the point of their life where they were looking at me, I wasn't there. And then when I want them to listen to me and look at me, they're not going to be interested in me anymore because I wasn't there for them when it was important. So yeah, it's, um, the church can be very punishing, just asking for more and more and more. And especially if you're, if you're talented or gifted, if you don't have people in your life keeping an eye out for you, your wife, your children, you can say, you know what? Don't be out there tonight. Instead, I had people throwing words at me in exhortations and in preaching. But it was okay because the Lord released me. And I was not going to let anybody condemn me for what the Lord released me for. Because I wasn't, it wasn't that I was scrimping. I wasn't trying to cut God short on anything. It was just about living up to the expectations of people. And this goes back to the cause of what people are saying, the control, the criticism, um, the lack of understanding, the on a willingness to express a different point of view. <clears throat> you can't even say to folks that there's a good reason why you shouldn't be in church. The mind is just so, so far gone.